welcome to Yoga with Katie. I'm Katie, this is Fred and this is Winnie and we are here for um, a nice little happy yoga class. Um, so we've got a nice all rounder today, we're going to go through uh, strengthening stretching through the full body. Um, I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're going to finish rather than with the traditional Shavasana, we're going to finish with um, some pranayama today with some um, bumblebee breath, which is really nice if you're feeling like stressed out, intense, uh, really nice for reducing tension. Okay, um, it's quite an energising practice today as well. Quite, quite enjoy it. Okay, so we're going to start in a comfortable seated position. Um, you'll leave your mat, your socks and shoes off. You might want a block or something similar, uh, and possibly a strap, or if you have a yoga strap, you can use like a belt or a dressing gown cord or something like that. Um, if you're quite tight through the hips, you might want to start off by sitting on your block. You can sit on it, and you let the sit bones fall forward from the front, so you've just got the fleshy part of your buttocks on the block. This gives you a bit of extra space through the hips, and that'll help you sit up a little bit taller um, if you are tight through the hips. So you can be in a comfortable cross-legged position, or you can begin in Sukhasana or Easy Pose, where you'll draw one heel in towards the hips, and then the other heel sits directly in front of it, so your heels are aligned one in front of the other. And so I encourage the knees down towards the mat, so you begin to roll the shoulders up, back and down, squeeze the shoulder blades down together, press the hands on the knees or palms to ceiling, whichever feels better for you today. Take a deep inhale through the nose, and on the exhale allow the eyes to close or the gaze to soften. And we're going to begin by drawing our focus to the breath. A long, smooth inhale through the nose, and an equally long, smooth exhale back out. And again, feel the natural rise and fall of the body with the breath, and begin to exaggerate that movement. On the inhale, let the belly swell outwards like a balloon filling with air. On the exhale, draw the belly button in towards the spine, fill the muscles through the abdomen and begin to engage. And again, as you inhale, feel all four sides of the torso swelling outwards as the lungs fill with air. As you exhale, draw the navel in towards the spine, feel that core engagement, that feeling like you're about to brace to laugh. And I'd like you to stick with that breath as you start to scan through your body, just taking a moment to check in with how you're feeling today. Notice the little niggles, aches or pains. Notice also the areas of comfort and of ease. It's also an excellent opportunity to set yourself an intention for today's practice, whether that's to really get in tune with your own breath, to move in time with your own breath, uh, whether it's to laugh at when things go wrong with the dogs <laughs> here in my house, um, whether it's to strengthen, to uh, to really stretch. If you can choose what to find what works for you today. If you set yourself a little intention, you can keep coming back to it through the class. Helps give you that bit of motivation, something to aim towards. Okay, take one last breath here. And on the exhale, allow the eyes to gently open. <laughs> I've got a doctor staring me out here. Okay, so we're going to start to warm up through the body. So if you bring your hands to rest so that you've got your hands on your shins, we're going to start circling through the torso. So I'd like to start by finding that root of your body. So it's just underneath the belly button. It's that point where your weight resides, uh, right down in the real root of you. And then you can start to circle the ribs around that root connection. And it's a small circle at first. You can gradually start to make it larger and larger. And you can start to find a cat and a cow sensation here. As you move forward, you're lifting through the heart space. Then rounding out as you move backwards. So you're finding your cow as you move forwards and your cat as you come back. Feel free to add dogs to your practice if you need them. They spice it up. Okay, the next time that your heart comes to the front, I'd like you to reverse that circle and move back in the opposite direction. I don't think Fred understands what I'm doing or why. So, 
put the third one on today and it's lunchtime, so I think he's uh, expecting it to be time for cuddles and tea drinking rather than more yoga. Okay, keep focus on keeping uh, pulling the crown of the head up towards the ceiling as you're moving here. You want to maintain that length through the spine. It's really nice, it's like a real churning sensation in the abdomen, but like a pestle and mortar effect. It's really nice for waking up through the core. Uh, it's starting to mobilise through the spine at the same time. And uh, just all the internal organs have been, feel like they're getting a little bit of a massage in there. They moved around a little bit. I feel it's really energising and uh, awakening kind of sensation. Okay, last time. And then the next time your heart comes to the front, I'd like you to come back to that neutral spine, sitting up nice and tall. And from here, we're going to start to uh, warm up through the joints in the arms and shoulders. So you're going to inhale, to draw your hands together, and exhale to activate through the elbows, pressing the palms together, elbows out wide from the wrists. We inhale to reach the hands out to the right hand side, and exhale to press the palms together, engaging through the shoulders. We inhale to reach overhead, palms together, exhale to press them in, really engaging. We inhale to the left, and exhale, press and activate, and back to centre. You're going to go back again in the opposite direction, so you're going to inhale to the left first this time, then above, and then to the right. So you can move in time with your own breath here. You're going to change direction each time, come back to the centre heart space. If you're feeling really perky, you can always add a little clap instead of just that hand tap. You can move in your own speed here. You can speed your breath up in time with your hands. You can speed your uh, hands up in time with your breath or slow things down. Come back to that intention and find what you're looking for today. If it's for peace, if it's for energising, for strength. Find that, that marriage between breath and movement. And you're trying to reach really high up, really far out each time, you're really activating as you press in. You're going to go one more time in each direction. And then coming back to centre. And from here, we're going to uh, release the hands and walk them just behind the hips. And then, I'm really sorry, Freddie. You're going to unravel the legs and bring the feet out just in front of the body. Um, we're going to go out hip distance or slightly wider apart through the feet, and then you stay bent. From here, you can windscreen wiper the legs from side to side. And this can be a small movement at the top if that's the kind of range of movement you've got. I can start to let them come deeper and deeper, possibly let the knees fall all the way from one side to the other. Shuffle forward a little bit so I'm not hitting a drop in my knees on the way. So here we're just starting to open up through the hips. See a puppy in the background in the other room who's snuck a trainer off the shelf and it's new room. Okay, one last time in each direction. Okay. And for me, can you keep the hands behind your back? You're going to slengthen through the spine and lift your heart to that crease between wall and ceiling. You're trying to find the long straight spine here. If you need to, you can always release down and line your back for this part. We're going to start bicycling the legs. If you need to, you can kind of soften through the elbows, squeezing the shoulder blades down together, but you're maintaining that straight line from the crown of the head to the tailbone. Just starting to warm up through the joints and the legs. <laughs> hey boy! And then reverse that circle and back pedal. Oh, the glamour. <laughs> Thank you for kisses. Okay, release that off, and then from here we're going to put standing. So you can make your own way up, we can come around to all fours, curl the toes under, walk the hands in, lift the knees, 
and walk the hands up the legs up slowly, bring your head up last. <clears throat> and from here we're going to come to the top of our mat for our sun salutations. So we're going to begin in Tadasana or Mountain Pose. You'll have the feet hip distance apart. You'll engage through the legs by drawing the heels and the toes together by lifting the kneecaps, engaging through the thighs. Draw the navel into the spine, engaging through the core. Shoulders roll up, back and down, and squeeze the shoulder blades down and together, engaging through the shoulders, opening through the heart. Palms face forward, chin is parallel to the ground. Begin to inhale, to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling, and sweep the fingertips upwards. On the exhale, send the hips back and down. You're going to curl the tailbone slightly under here, making that long, smooth line through the lower back. It's just a soft bend of the knees this first time, an easy chair, but we put us in there. On the exhale, you're going to release your fingertips and fold forwards. Into an easy forward fold. Maintain a generous bend of the knees this first time. As you come to easy uttanasana or forward fold. Next inhale, slide the hands halfway up the shins and come to a halfway flat back position in a long straight line from the crown of the head to the tailbone and the eyes down to the mat. The exhale to release all the way back down, bend the knees generously enough to get the hands flat to the ground. And from here you're going to step your right foot back. One long stride or a few little hops. You're going to pivot on the back heel, pointing the toes out by about 45 degrees. And we inhale to sweep the fingertips upwards and look into our warrior one. We've got the hips and torso facing over the front knee. From here you release your right hand to the back of your right thigh and you reach the left fingertips upwards. We exhale, sweep the right fingertips back up. Exhale, to release hands to the floor. Pivot on the back heel so the toes face forwards and inhale to step the left foot back in line with the right, drop to the knees and come to a three quarter plank position with a long straight line from the crown of the head to the knees. On the next out breath, keeping the elbows tucked in tight to the side to slowly lower all the way down to the mat. And we inhale to lift the chest and shoulders, keeping a generous bend in the elbows this first time, baby cobra. And exhale to release. The next inhale pushes us back to that three quarter plank position and you curl the toes under and exhale, send the hips up, back and down as we come to our downward facing dog. You can pedal the feet out here if you want to release tension in the calves to eventually find stillness with the feet about hip distance apart, the hands about shoulder width and the weight balanced equally between the two. You're trying to find a long straight line from the hips to the wrists so you need to bend your knees to maintain that line, that's fine. From here, you're going to shift the weight forwards and step your right foot in to meet your right hand. Pivot on the back heel so the toes turn out by about 45 degrees. And inhale to lift up to your warrior one on the other side. Hips and torso facing over the front knee. And again, we inhale to release left hand to left thigh and reach right fingertips upwards. We exhale, sweep the left fingertips back up. You're going to release hands to mat, pivot on the back heel, step it back. And again, you can drop to the knees here and work in that three quarter plank, or you can keep your knees lifted and work in a full plank in a long straight line from the crown of the head to the heels. And then your next out breath, keeping the elbows tucked tight to the side, you shift the weight forwards and slowly lower all the way down to the mat. You inhale to lift the chest and shoulders, either keeping that generous bend in the elbows or straightening out to the full expression of cobra. We exhale to release. The next inhale sends us back to whichever version of plank you're working in. We exhale, down the facing dog. We inhale to walk the feet in to meet the hands. And find our forward fold, encouraging the crown of the head towards the feet. You can come back to that generous bend of the knees or straighten through the legs for a deep stretch into the hamstrings. We inhale to find the halfway lift, sliding the hands halfway up the shins, 
Or if you maintain it straight back in that position, you can leave fingertips on the floor as you straighten out through the spine. We exhale to release to the forward fold. Then sweep the fingertips upwards as you inhale to lift back to your chair position. From here we bring hands to prayer at the heart. We're going to have an optional twist. You can stay just holding the chair if you want to. Otherwise, you're going to exhale to draw left elbow to right thigh. Then try to draw your sternum towards your thumbs here. We inhale to centre and exhale to the opposite side. And again, trying to draw your sternum towards your thumbs. We inhale to centre. Exhale to release the hands and inhale, straighten up, back to our mountain pose, Atadasana, and again, inhale to extend, exhale to chest, inhale to release the hands, exhale, forward fold, next inhale we find the halfway lift of your choice, and we exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees generously enough to get the hands down, then inhale, step the right foot back. On one strike, a few little hops, pivoting on the back heel, turning the toes out by 45 degrees, we inhale to lift to our warrior one. Quiet please, wait. Hips and torso facing over the front knee. We inhale to lift to the baby or the full cobra. Oh my gosh, what a naughty puppy. Exhale to release to the mat. We inhale to push back to the full or three quarter plank and exhale to downward facing dog. We inhale to walk the feet in to meet the hands and exhale to find our forward fold, encouraging to cram the head towards the feet and chest towards the thighs. Next inhale, we find our halfway lift. We exhale, 
falls. Really sweep the tips upwards as we inhale. The chair. And again, option to hold here. Or hands come to the prayer. We exhale. Left elbow to right thigh. Take that twist. You can always extend the arms out fully here if you want more. We inhale centre and exhale opposite side. And again, option if you want it to extend fingertips between floor and ceiling. Inhale centre, exhale. I'm so sorry about this puppy. She's a naughty girl, isn't she? She is a very naughty girl. Grab a quick drink if you need it. So this is why there's been like a few less videos recently. This is happening at the time and I keep giving up. Ten minutes in. So I've decided that I'm just going to persevere because if I keep going, eventually she will give in. I'm assuming. Things are fast. Okay, so we're going to move into our static poses next. Have a step wide on your mat, wide up the feel of that pull on the inner thighs, and then turn your toes out to the sides. So, I'd like to bend through the knees here and check you can see the middle toes on each foot. If you can't, just walk the toes in a little bit until you can see them. Then you can straighten out, you're going to tilt the pelvis slightly up, and the tail down and up. Keep your shoulders in your hips and a long straight spine. Begin to engage through the legs by drawing the heels and the inner thighs together without moving the legs. Ooh, one of it. Do you see them? Trying to look at the dogs at the same time, see what they're up to. You can drive, draw the heels and the inner thighs together, really squeezing them in to feel that grounding sensation. Lift the kneecaps, drawing them up the thighs, really engaging through the legs. Core stays engaged, begin to inhale. Sweep the fingertips overhead. And although I can see the tops of my hands at the top, Begin to take hold of the left wrist with the right hand, then gently inhale to lift it up and exhale to draw it over. We inhale to centre and opposite side. Inhaling to extend and exhaling to reach over. And again, you can move in time with your own breath here. Each inhale, lifting through centre. Each exhale, you're reaching over. If you want to hold for a couple of breaths on each side, you can do. Again, find what suits you here today. If you're focusing on moving with your breath or with energy, moving in time with me, moving in time with your breath. If you're focusing more on the strength and the stretching, you might want to be holding over for a little longer, increasing that stretch. Increasing that core strength by holding over to the side. Okay, we're going to go once more to each side. Okay. From here, we're going to bend both the knees and the elbows at the same time. Palms face forwards, knees pull towards the wall behind you. We find our goddess squat. We're going to try to keep that tailbone curling under, trying to squeeze the shoulder blades down and together. You can work higher up or lower down, it's slightly easier. If your hips are higher, slightly harder, and they're lower, as you come deeper into the squat. You've got the option to hold here, or again, we've got an option for a goddess twist. If you're taking the twist, you'll release your hands to your thighs just above the knees. Then you'll tilt forwards, keeping the core engaged in a long straight spine. And again, you can tilt forwards as far or as little as you want to here. Then you're going to turn your right fingertips to point up the length of the thigh. And then you're going to draw your right elbow towards your left heel as you pull your left shoulder towards the ceiling. And you follow your left shoulder with your gaze. And again, keeping your core engaged, you're drawing the inner thighs together to keep that stability, that grounding. You're maintaining that long straight spine.
Okay, we're twisting with me, inhale, bring the gaze back down to the ground, fingertips both facing down, we go straight to the other side, left fingertips pointing up the length of the thigh, and draw left shoulder towards right heel, pull the right shoulder towards ceiling and follow that right shoulder with your gaze. So here we're focusing on strengthening through the legs, the glutes, through the core, and through the shoulders. Just stretching through the inner thigh, opening through the hips, you're opening through the heart. Okay, again we're twisting, you're going to inhale through the gaze and the fingertips all to point back down to the ground. Then we're going to inhale to lift back up, one final breath in full goddess. Option to lift the heels and come onto the toes. We're here to challenge your balance. And release the heels, release the arms, straighten the legs. Okay. <clears throat> and from here, entertain your right toes out to the side, your left toes to face over the wide edge of your mat. And to keep your hips and torso facing over the wide edge of your mat. And to inhale, sweep the arms up in line with the shoulders and bend the front knee. And again, you can check that you can see the middle toe of your right foot here. If you can't, you can walk that foot in a little closer until you can see it. Begin to inhale, to pull the crown of the head to the ceiling. Exhale, to sink a little deeper if you can. Squeezing the shoulder blades down together. In fear of addressing a two or warrior two. You've got the option to hold here, or there's an option to come to a side angle. Bending the right elbow, releasing it to right thigh, and sweeping the left fingertips up and over. So you're trying to find a long straight line from the fingertips to the back heel. You're actually pushing up and away from the thigh, through the shoulder and the elbow. So your shoulder shouldn't be creeping up towards your ear. You've got a really active triangle shape between thigh, hip, waist, and upper arm. <clears throat> and from here, we're going to come up to a half moon balance. If you struggle with balance work, you might just do this pressed against the wall. And there's also an option to use a block for your hand if you want it. So if you have a block, you can start in this position with your legs. Um, you can have your hand resting on your block just in front of your um, right foot. You're going to step in a little bit with the back foot. I'm going to step back a little bit away from the wall. And then you're going to straighten up through that front leg as you lift your left foot and point the toes over the narrow edge of the mat. Then you're going to try and draw your torso to face over the wide edge of the mat. And you can lift your left fingertips up towards the ceiling as well. You're going to keep your foot flexed, you're going to keep your core engaged for balance and keep your gaze at a fixed spot on the ground. And again, if you're quite flexible, you might be able to release your block to a lower level or even to get your hand to the ground. Okay, take one last breath. And exhale to release as gracefully as you can. Here's bring feet hip distance apart, clasp the elbows with the hands, generous bend of the knees, fold forwards to a ragdoll position. And again, you've got the option to hold here in the ragdoll, just allowing the crown of the head to come down, release some tension through the body. Oh, we've got an option to take a twist yet again. If you're taking the twist, you're going to bring your right hand down just in front of your feet and in between them. And you're going to inhale, straighten your left leg as you reach your left fingertips up towards the ceiling, follow them with your gaze. Exhale to release, and inhale to roll all the way back up. And we're going to repeat those last few moves on the opposite side. And again, if you wanted your block for your half moon, have that with you. So again, you're going to step nice and wide on your mat. 
So you're going to turn your left toes out to face over the narrow edge of the mat. Right toes facing over the wide edge, hips and torso facing over the wide edge as well. And sweep the arms up in line with the shoulders and exhale to bend the left knee. And again, just check for me, you can see the middle toes of your left foot. And again, you can sink in deeper for it to work harder and lift up higher to work easier. You can squeeze the shoulder blades down together, inhaling to lift the crown of the head to the ceiling, squeezing the inner thighs together, so you're really grounded and stabilised here. So, Warrior 2, we'll be able to dress in the two, strengthening through the legs, the glutes, through the core and through the shoulders, and again, you're stretching through the inner thigh, opening through the hips and through the heart. And again, option to hold here, or you can come to our side angle, bending the left elbow, releasing it to left thigh, and sweeping right fingertips up and over. To find that long straight line from fingertips to back heel. And again, you're trying to push actively up and away from the thigh. Trying to maintain that really sharp triangle shape between waist, thigh, and upper arm. Trying to keep that shoulder pulling away from the ear. Shoulder blades still squeezing down together. And your back should be flat here as you press up against the wall. And again, we're going to release and come up to our half moon. Block just in front of your foot if you need it. Step in a little bit here. Bring your balance into your left foot. And again, we inhale to lift the right leg. And again, you can have this block lower down or even be using the floor. You're going to turn your right toes to face over the wide edge of the mat, so your torso to face over the wide edge of the mat. And if you can, inhale to reach right fingertips up towards the ceiling. Again, engaging the core and stirring to fix spots on the ground helps with balance. And this is a really challenging pose here. If you're not in full pose, you can be tapping down and adding little lifts whilst you're working up to it. You can even keep the torso down with both hands down and just lift the back leg and hold here. One last breath. And again, as graceful as you can, release down. Feet hip distance apart, clasp elbows and hands. Generous bend of the knees, fold forwards to that right goal position. And again, option to hold here, just take it as a rested pose if that's what you need at the moment. Or again, option to take a twist. You're taking a twist, left hand places down between the feet and just in front of them. And you straighten the right leg to reach right fingertips to ceiling, following those right fingertips with your gaze. Again, this is really nice with stretching out through the lower back, through the glutes, through the hamstrings. You're also opening through the heart. And twists are really nice to give you a little space through the vertebrae of the spine, give you a little massage in the internal organs and digestive system. Also boosting circulation to the upper half of the body whilst you have your head below the heart. Exhale to release. And then from here we're going to put them all the way down to the ground. So you're going to bend your knees generously enough to get your hands flat to the ground. And then you're going to step your right foot back. So you're going to have, come to a low lunge position. You're going to have your left foot in at the front just to the inside edge of your left hand your right foot back. You're going to be pushing your hips down towards your left heel and a long straight spine from the crown of the head down to the tailbone. And again, this is the point where you might want your strap um, as an option to stretch out through the front of the thigh at the same time here. So um, and again, if you get uh, pain in the knees with um, you know, being on a hard surface, you can always put a block under your knee. You want it under the fleshy part of your knee, quite high up. Or you've got an option to double your mat over a couple of times. You're going to bend the back knee. You need to lift the hips slightly as you reach around to take hold of the toes or the ankle. 
of the back foot. And then you're going to try and draw that heel in towards the hip as you sink the hips back down towards your left heel. Fred sat just to the side of the camera glowering at me at the moment. You're trying to stay engaged through the core, trying to encourage that peeling ever closer to the hip, trying to encourage the hips ever closer to your left heel. So you're really stretching out through the front of the thigh, through the hip flexor, strengthening through thigh, glutes, and through core. Take one last breath, then release that back heel. And from here, you're going to pivot your right foot around so it's facing over the back wide edge of your mat. You're going to walk the fingertips around and you're going to start to straighten out your left leg. And you can edge that foot further away if you need to here. You're going to try and point the toes and keep the entire sole of the foot down. You're trying to find a long straight line. You can measure this out against the front of your mat from your knee to your heel and then your hand comes again into that line. And here you can sweep the fingertips up and over as we come to gate pose. So you're trying to push your hips forwards here, trying to maintain a long straight line from fingertips to toes. If you're struggling, you can always lift the toes or turn them in towards the front. You're trying to keep the hips lifting up and away from the mat. You're trying to actually push up through the foot, through the knee, and through the hand to find that length. Okay, then from here, you're going to release, send the hips back as you let the left fingertips come down. Then you're going to pivot around so you're facing towards the opposite edge of your mat and you're going to step your right foot forward this time. Come to low lunge on the opposite side. Again, you're framing the foot with your fingertips, encouraging hips towards heel. And again, you can stay here, maintaining that straight line from the crown of the head to the tailbone. Or you can lift the back foot, reach up and around to take hold of that foot or ankle and draw that in towards the hip as you send the hips down towards your right ankle. And again, don't forget you can always have padding into that knee if you need it. This can be quite intensive to have your weight on that bone. To help combat that, you can always really be pressing actively up and away through your right foot, through your fingertips. Okay, we come back to gates on the opposite side. So again, you're going to release your back foot walk the fingertips around to the front as you bring it your left toes to face over the back edge of the wide edge of your mat and walk your left hand around so it's again in that straight line between your left knee and your right foot and if you can point the right toes and point them again in that straight line away from the body reaching right fingertips up and over Again, you're trying to stay really active through the body here, pushing up and away from the mat, really lifting the hips and the waist away from the mat. You're trying to stay in that straight line, pushing the hips forwards, pulling the shoulder back. Because you feel as if the front of your body could be comfortably pressed up against the wall without anything sticking out or hanging back. Try not to let your head collapse down, you want to keep it active as if it's part of the spine. The neck is in fact part of the spine, so you want to find that activation so that your spine continues through the neck and it doesn't start to fold down towards the floor. And 
Okay, here again, you're stretching out through the hip flexor, through the thigh, you're strengthening through the core, through the shoulder, you're opening through the heart space, stretching out through the length of your side body. Take one last breath. And again, send the hips back as you release your right fingertips. Walk them forwards and then step your right knee back to join your left. And from here, send the toes out to one side and come to a seat. We're going to bring the soles of your feet together, take hold of the ankles and we'll come to bound ankle or Badakonasana. You can adjust how close or how far away your heels are here. It's fine that feels comfortable for you. If you're quite tight through the hips and the knees, further away might be better. If you want a deep stretch, closer in might be better. You're going to inhale to lengthen the crown of the head to the ceiling and squeeze the knees in. Then exhale to open the knees out wide. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Picture a little butterfly flapping its wings. Inhale to lift. Next time, we stay down. So you're encouraging the knees towards the mat, sitting up nice and tall. You can stay holding on to the ankles, you can interlace the fingers, reach them around the toes and hold here. And again, if you want more, you can bend the elbows, bring them into the calves and maintain that straightness in the spine as you lean forwards. <coughs> I'm losing my voice a little bit here. If you need to, you can rock from side to side. This helps to release the tension a little bit through the hips. And sometimes after that, you can find that your knees encourage a little closer towards the mat. If you are quite flexible here, you can always release your grip on your feet. Walk your hands forwards and come to a forward fold here. This is as good as I can get in this position though, I'm afraid. One last breath. Inhale, to come seated. Bring the hands to the outer edges of the thighs and exhale to draw the knees together. From here, we come to a boat position. So again, you've got the options to keep the hands and the heels down if you need to. You're looking for a V shape between the crown of the head, hips and knees. You can bring the shins parallel to the ceiling and take hold of the backs of the thighs here. You can scroll the shoulders down together and lift through the heart to maintain that V shape here. You can straighten through the legs and or release the arms to hover in line with the knees. Further options take a twist if you want it. You'll take hold of the outer edge of your left, right leg of your left hand and open your right fingertips out behind you. And repeat to the opposite side. And again, whichever position is best for you here. Take one last breath wherever you are. And release your feet. Send the legs out long in front of the body. Move the fleshy part of your buttocks out of the way. Inhale to reach fingers to ceiling, flex your feet and point your toes to the ceiling and exhale to reach over towards your feet. I'd like you to try and keep straight back this time though. Inhale to lift, exhale to reach. Inhale to lift and next time we stay down. So you release your hands to rest on your thighs, your shins, be quite flexible through the hamstrings, around the toes. And you've got the option to stay here maintaining that straight back position, or you can round out and allow the torso to fold down towards the thighs. Okay, if you're struggling here, you can always soften through the knees, or you can bring the feet slightly further apart so that hip distance apart, and that can also make it feel a lot easier for you. You're trying to encourage the crown of the head towards the feet and your torso towards the thighs or to maintain that straight back position, just encouraging the crown of the head towards the feet. Here you're stretching out through the hamstrings, through the glutes, through the lower back, and seated forward fold. Just 
really nice while you've got a blanket or a dog that does come to cover you. You can allow some of your weight to rest down on them. It takes some tension out of the body um, and it's a really nice rested position. I wasn't particularly planning to show you that today, but as soon as my dog's cuddled in, I thought that I would take the opportunity. Um, you know, dog yoga is the best. Use your dog. Use them to make it a better practice. Or a worse one, depending on what kind of noises they're making. Big up my dogs for that. Okay, we're going to inhale. Let's come back up. I know, boy, I know. And then from here, we're going to come to half lord of the fishes. I know, buddy, I'm sorry, boy. So again, to keep your legs out long in front of the body, I'll just shift around so you can see what I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> and again, if you are a bit tighter through the hips, you might want that block underneath you to sit on, with your sit bones hanging down, flush your pants, your buttocks on it. Then you're going to cross your right foot over your left leg. And again, if you're tight through the hips, having that foot further away down by the shin might be better. Um, if you can, again, to try and draw the heel in towards your hip. And you can hug that thigh in towards the torso with your left forearm. You've got the option to hold here, just sitting up nice and tall, feeling the stretch into the outer thigh. Oh, baby, sorry. Sorry. Or you can take a twist, swimming your right fingertips behind and following your right shoulder with your gaze. Oh, he dies. We'll have cuddles in a minute. Oh no, I missed your face too. Okay, we inhale to centre. And then you just bring the hands behind the hips. You're going to slide your left foot in towards the torso. You're going to keep your right ankle over your left thigh. You're going to flex that foot so the sole of the foot's parallel to your left thigh. <clears throat> You're going to encourage your right knee away from the torso. You come to a seated pigeon. <laughs> You've got the option here. This is like setting to a real free for all curl. You've got the option to bring this into a balanced boat pigeon here by lifting the shin, interlacing. <laughs> it's hard to do with a drop on you, I'll tell you what. Interlacing the fingers, throwing the needle, interlacing the fingers behind the left thigh, bringing that shin parallel to the ceiling. You're finding that boat position here whilst you're encouraging the right knee away from the body. Okay, release that off and ravel the legs. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. So extending the legs out again, you're going to cross your left foot over your right thigh. Again, closer or further in as suits you. And you can hug that in with the right forearm. You've got the option to stay here or swimming all left fingertips behind the body, twisting around to follow your left shoulder with your gaze. Again, you're sitting up nice and tall here. The toes of your right foot stay flexed and pointing up towards the ceiling. And you try not to muscle into the stretch here. You want to be able to release your hands and maintain that level of twist. But that support rather than to push you any further into it. Okay, inhale to centre, release your hand, walk the fingertips behind the back. And again, you're going to draw your right foot in, keeping your left ankle crossed. No, pretty, pretty. Let me show this one. And again, you've got the option to thread the needle here and lift up your right shin parallel to the ceiling as you're encouraged left knee away from the torso. So you're thinking pigeon through the legs, getting that stretch into the glute, you're thinking boat through the upper body, squeezing the shoulders down and together, lifting through the heart space. You can always straighten that front leg as well if you want more here. Okay, then exhale to release. Okay, from here, you're going to um, come back to that Sukhanasana, that easy pose that we started in. 
begin to walk the fingertips away from your body, just as far as is comfortable for you. Walk the fingertips out to the right hand side. Then gently pull back to your left shoulder. And change sides, walking back to the centre. Pull the fingers out to the left and gently pull back to your right shoulder. Fingertips back to your centre, walk my hands in and come to a natural, comfortable spine. So we're going to come to our pranayama next, our breathing practice. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to do this from a seated position, so we're going to stay where we are. Um, you want to be able to sit nice and tall for this though. So if you're struggling to do that naturally, you might want to have that block propped underneath your bottom. You might want to be pressed against the wall so you can rest against it and sit up nice and tall there. It's, it's the length we're bothered about. We're not bothered about if you're doing it by yourself or if you need help to get there. You just want to be able to sit up nice and tall so you can really fill your lungs. If you are with me in Sukhasana, easy pose, you've very likely come to the exact same position that you had for the warm up. If you have, I'd like you to reverse the heel that you've got to the front, just so that we stay nice and even. Okay, so we come to a uh, bumblebee breath today. Um, <clears throat> and this, it's not for everybody. I, I absolutely adore this. But it's a bit of a Marmite kind of a pranayama where some people love it, some people hate it. And if you hate it, you can just come back to regular, deep, calm breathing. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but I thought I'd give it a try and see what you think. You might as well give it a whirl. It's not going to do you any harm. Um, it's just a little hum as you breathe. Okay, so first of all, we're going to try it without using our hands. Um, so you can see how it feels that way and get a hint of whether you're going to like it or not. So you're going to sit up nice and tall. You're going to inhale through the nose. Then you're going to bring your lips together, but really softly so they can move slightly and you're going to hum on your out breath and try to extend that out breath a little. So it's an inhale and a hum. So try that a few times, see how that feels for you. You should be feeling the vibrating sensation through the lips, through the tongue, possibly through the entire body. Um, I love that sensation for me that I feel, I feel so connected to the world around me, to myself, to other people. I, I find it both, um, like I, I both enter into an inner world and connect at the same time and I, I don't think I've found anything else that really makes me feel like that. Um, but yeah, it goes a whole actually, I would say it does. So after a few breaths, you're probably starting to get a feel for whether this is something that is for you or isn't. If it isn't, you can just come back to regular breathing, sitting up nice and tall, smooth inhales through the nose, and try to extend the out breath slightly, make it a bit longer than your in breath. And this just helps to calm the parasympathetic system. <clears throat> if you have been enjoying the bumblebee breath and you'd like more, there's an option to also block the ears at the same time, which will really intensify that sound for you, that vibration, that sound, so it feels like everything inside your head is the humming of bumblebees. Um, <clears throat> but do bear in mind that once you've closed your ears, you may not be able to hear me speaking, so I may come on without you. So we're just going to do one breath like that to start with. I'll explain how to do it. We'll do one breath see how that feels and come back for a little chat about it and then we're going to do um four breaths all together um after that so for one breath you're not going to worry about anything fancy you're just going to take your thumbs and then bring them to that fleshy part of the ear that sticks out here and gently close it so you won't be able to hear the outside world and all the sounds inside that you make yourself are intensified so you're going to close your ears off, take one inhale through the nose and extend that exhale with the hum. So it's an inhale. Mm. 
Okay, so hopefully you've finished that breath and you have removed your thumbs from your ears and you can hear me again. Um, I hope that felt good for you as well. If not, again, you can come back to that earlier option of just the hum, or you can come back to just that long, smooth breathing. <clears throat> Either way, you're gonna take four breaths all together. And if you're gonna join me with the thumbs closing off the ears, you've got a further option with your hands. So as your thumbs come to your ears, you'll be able to bring your little pinky fingers to rest on your eyebrows, and then spread the rest of your fingers out over your forehead and scalp. You to be squeezing your elbows out, your shoulder blades down together. Whichever you're doing, you're going to be sitting up nice and tall. We're going to have four breaths together. And I'll, I'll do mine as slow as I can so that everyone has a chance to join in. I'll leave it a beat or two before I start speaking again. And then we can come back together. So you've got four breaths whenever you're ready. I recommend eyes closed as well to really intensify the experience. Okay, <clears throat> so hopefully you've all had a chance to complete your four breaths. When you have done, you can release your hands back down to rest upon the knees and just breathe in your natural tidal rhythm. Just take a moment to settle into how that's feeling now, to notice that vibration is still going on within your body, within your soul. It's getting a bit cheesy now, aren't I? Sorry. Um, I, I find this a really um, moving experience for me. Some, some pranayama um, I, I find very, I find it very changing through my physiology, through my uh, mental and emotional states, um, as well as through my physical body. Um, and I find it one of the most fascinating parts of yoga is that that relation between breath and movement and the power of breath for your body. Um, I'm sure I think it's really nice to explore it. Um, so we have come to an end of uh, today's class. I do hope you've enjoyed it, that you've strengthened and stretched through everything that you've got. Um, um, do feel free to let me know how you got on. Questions, feedback, always appreciated and welcomed. Um, do you take yourself a shavasana if you can spare the time here? Come out to lie. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling too mean for the dog to disturb him. Um, you need to come out to lie long on your mat. Extend the legs out toward the bottom corners of the mat. Let the feet fall naturally out to the sides. Arms come out long by the sides with the palms to the ceiling and the shoulders roll up, back and down. Sliding the shoulder blades underneath the heart space, opening through the heart. Pelvis tilts ever so slightly upwards and the chin ever so slightly downwards to give you length from the crown of the head to the tailbone. And again, if you do get any little niggles in the lower back, having your knees bent, feet as wide as the mat and allowing your knees to fold in and rest upon each other can be more comfortable for you here. Um, and make any adjustments that you need to to become entirely comfortable. Add pillows, blankets, anything that you need. Find yourself a guided relaxation or meditation to follow if that's something that would interest you today. 
and I will leave you there to enjoy your relaxation. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.